guess who has COVID? That's right, this gal. Um, I was actually unsure if I was going to address it or not, but I feel like in my voice and such, it's kind of hard to ignore the fact that I do sound different. Like, this is my first time having COVID and hopefully the last, um, but I feel like the thing it attacked the most was my voice. Like, this past week, I feel like it's been a whirlwind in terms of, like, my speaking and whatnot, which is hard for me. I love to talk. I talk all the time. Um, but yes, I have COVID, but that's okay because the Disney princes take priority and I am here and ready to talk about my thoughts and feelings. Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel. So it has been a hot minute since I've done like a classic Disney related video. And by Disney I of course mean the Disney animated movies as we talk about Disney Channel all the time on here, that's nothing new. But a few weeks ago my friend Jackie and I went to Disney on Ice and as you can imagine they had this whole special segment for the Disney princesses and their princes. And so I'm sitting there eating my snow cone and I thought to myself, you know what, I love Flynn Rider so much and Naveen and Shang and Kristoff and so I'm like you know what I need to do why have I not ranked all of the Disney princes just like I ranked the Ken characters a little while ago and so that is what we're here to do today and I'm excited so we've got 12 boys to rank today we're just going over the official lineup and we're just going over the original movies so no sequels no remakes no animated television series just the original films just because I personally didn't have time to scrub through every piece of media that each one of these men have premiered in so I'm like no we'll just focus on the original movies to make things a lot easier on myself but but yeah, so with all that being said, let's just jump right into it. So at number 12, we have the Prince from Snow White, and I feel like this one is a little bit of a no-brainer as to why I would have this man last on my list. It's mainly due to the fact that we just don't really know much about this guy, he just kind of exists. He's only present for a total of two scenes throughout this movie, and I just personally feel like I don't know this man. Like, he could be walking down the street and I wouldn't say a thing, you know? And then there's also the fact that I feel like the two scenes that he is in in this movie just really aren't the best. In the beginning of the movie, he trespasses, like he just hops over the wall once he hears her singing. And like, yes, he does have a nice voice, which I enjoy, but like he's frightening her throughout the entirety of that scene. Like she is running away from him in fear. But then I'm also like, maybe that was like partly her just like playing hard to get or something. I don't know. But at the end of the scene, she does like send over a bird to him. And so that was a thing. And I guess that gesture was probably a lot nicer back then when they were actual birds before the government had taken them all and turned them into drones. And so yes, that is the first scene we see of the prince in this movie. And then the second scene, we start off with them saying that the prince has been searching for her, which I thought was nice. It is unclear as to if he's been searching for her since the moment that they sang together or since he heard about this like pretty dead girl, but for the sake of my own sanity, I'm just gonna go with the first one. Then there is the fact that he kisses her dead corpse, which is kind of weird, and how he just like goes on to be like, all right, now is the time when we leave. Like I found that to be a bit odd, but I guess he does let her ride on the horse instead, which I guess was nice. It's a classic fairy tale, so I feel like I can't harp on it too much. And also apparently they went on to live happily ever after, and so I love that for them. There is also also the fact that he is an actual prince like I will give him some bonus points for that like I know that that's literally what we're basing this list on is Disney princes but oftentimes they're princes through marriage at the end of the movie so I feel like this guy definitely gets some bonus points for being a prince from the start but that still doesn't make him any more appealing to me than any of the other guys on this list not to mention the fact that this guy doesn't even have a name like the prince are you kidding me you don't even have a name back of the list am I right um, and so yeah, that's the prince from Snow White at number 12. Now I feel like this next one will also be pretty obvious as to why he is so low on this list, but nonetheless, it is John Smith from Pocahontas. Now obviously Pocahontas is a very nostalgic movie for me, and so I have attachment to it because of that, but I still just feel like I can't talk about it without acknowledging the fact that it is super problematic and just disrespectful to the original story of Pocahontas. John Smith is a colonizer. He admits to fighting and probably killing numerous indigenous people in his past. They very much so make it seem like he does it as a sport as well like if you watch the first scene where he meets Pocahontas for the first time he's definitely treating her like his prey like he's gonna shoot down but then he's like oh no I can't do it because she's just too beautiful and I'm just like no I just I can't get behind it it makes me feel so icky and I know that that was kind of the whole point of this movie to show that like love changed him and once he met Pocahontas and he was finally able to see these people as real people but I just personally feel like he should have been able to see them as people beforehand like it shouldn't have just taken this pretty girl to be able to change his mind and like yes I know that Pocahontas is so much more of a character than just like some pretty girl, but I do feel like you can't deny just how overly sexualized she is in this movie. And so yes, he does come around by the end of the movie, but I just feel like his problematic beginning is too big of a red flag to not take into account while evaluating his character. But for the sake of this video, some things that he did in this movie that I feel like were good would probably be his relationship with Thomas, like how in the beginning of the movie when he jumps overboard for him, and then how he takes his place and gets captured for the crime of killing Kokoam instead of him. He also tries to reason with his crew 
through to not start a war with the indigenous peoples, which is good. And I also really liked the way in which he was able to ease Pocahontas' fears and make her feel like whatever was happening to him really wasn't that big of a deal, like when he got captured or when he was injured at the end of the film. And then of course there is the fact that he does take a bullet for her dad. That was very noble of him. Um, and also the fact that he can climb trees. That's just a personal one for me that I enjoy. I like that he can climb a nice tree. And so yes, I will admit that the guy does have some redeeming qualities to him, but overall he just gives me the ick too much that I just can't have him be any higher up on this list than he is. And also just the fact that they're able to communicate at all just makes no sense. I don't like it. Like I know that this is a Disney movie where like we have talking trees and animals and you're just kind of supposed to like fall into the fantasy of it all and just accept the fact that they can communicate even though they don't speak the same language. But I personally just I can't get behind it. It makes no sense. I don't like it. Um, and so yeah, that's how I feel about John Smith. Okay, so moving on, we have Prince Charming from Cinderella up next. So obviously this man is pretty low on this list for similar reasons as to why Snow White's prince was pretty low as well. But I feel like unlike with the prince from Snow White, with Charming, the scenes in which he is in in this movie, he's like pretty okay. I like that he's a man who knows what he wants. Like the moment he sees Cinderella for the first time, he stops what he's doing and he goes right to her. And the dude doesn't give up. Like when she runs away, he does go on to chase after her. And I know that there has been some controversy on the whole shoe thing, but I think it's important to remember that in this telling, that was not his idea. Idea. That was his father's idea. And as far as I interpreted things, I don't actually think he had any involvement in the whole shoe process at all. Because there's also the whole argument of like, he didn't even recognize Cinderella without the pretty dress. But honestly, in this movie, I feel like he wasn't even given the chance to. And I also feel like it's very unclear as to if he really did only marry her because she fit into the slipper or if because they brought her back to the palace and he was like, oh yeah, that's the girl I danced with. Nice to see you again. Let's get married. Like, we really don't know what happened in between those two scenes. But yeah, the dude can also dance and sing, which I think is a great bonus for Cinderella. And listen, I know we're only supposed to be going over the original movies in this video, like that was the criteria I personally set, but I just honestly can't get over him jumping out of a window in the third movie. If I would have taken sequels into account with this list, he probably would have been a little bit higher up on it just because I personally love him so very much in Cinderella 3. But yeah, there is also the fact that he is a prince from the start as well, which is great, and that they do go on to live happily ever after, which I just love for them as well. Also, shout out to Kit from the live action movie because that man truly has my heart, but the OG guy just really doesn't do it for me like some of the other men do on this list and so that is why he is number 10 also once again no name which is just really unfortunate. So yeah, that's how I feel about Prince Charming from Cinderella. Up next, we've got Prince Hans from Frozen. And you may be thinking, Caitlin, what are you doing? This man tried to kill Elsa and Anna and take over their kingdom. Like, shouldn't he be last on this list? And like, yes, you're probably right. This guy should probably be at the bottom. But there is the fact that I just feel like this guy is such an entertaining villain that I just couldn't have him be any lower than this. Like, would I want to marry the man? No, I don't like his sideburns. The guy is super power hungry and incredibly two-faced. And there's also the fact that he tells his whole plot to Anna and then doesn't actually wait around to make sure she actually dies. Like, I don't think that the guy is very bright either. And so, no, I don't like this man as a person, but I do think he is a very interesting character. Like, he's great at being fake, his acting skills are 10 out of 10, and I hate to say it, but he probably would have been a pretty decent king of Arendelle. Like, did you see him taking care of the people when Anna had him in charge? Like, I feel like he did a pretty decent job. But alas, he still sucks, and so that's why I personally can't have him be any higher up on this list than he is. I also just don't understand why, to this day, did he smile when he was in the water after Anna had left. Was he just happy that his plan was working out? We may never know. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts on Han. So let's move on to number eight. So at number eight, we have the Beast. And to be honest, he kind of reminds me of John Smith in a way. Just in the fact that he sucks so much in the beginning, but you feel bad kind of like judging him for that because that is also kind of the whole plot of the movie. So he's described in the beginning of this movie as being spoiled, selfish, unkind, and having no love in his heart. We all know the story. He wouldn't let the old lady into his castle for shelter, but then I'm also kind of like, neither would I, like stranger danger, you know? But I guess the whole point is that like he has this whole castle and people that could protect him if something went wrong and he still didn't let her in, which was kind of not the best on his part. He's also the reason why everybody who lives with him got turned into household objects. And I personally feel like he never really took accountability for that. The dude has some serious anger management issues and he's just so incredibly mean to everybody around him that it's almost hard to watch at times. He unrightfully imprisons Belle's dad and then goes on to do the exact same thing to Belle as well. And then there's also the fact that he like drags Belle's dad out by the collar and forces him to leave. And then it also bugs me how he is just like slightly nicer to Belle because she is this pretty girl who like has the potential of breaking the curse like that just bugs me and the whole like if she doesn't eat with me then she doesn't eat at all thing was just straight up abuse as well as when he like blows her snooping thing like way out of proportion and starts like breaking tables and stuff 
and then it bugs me because I feel like things immediately change once he saves her from the wolves and she mends his wounds like I feel like everything takes a complete 180. He then gives her a library and then we have this whole like romantic montage to show how much she's changed. He then shows her her father and lets her go to him and then shows mercy to Gaston even though he probably doesn't deserve it. And it's like look love changed the man and it sounds like this really beautiful pretty perfect picture but I personally just feel like I can't get past all the red flags from the beginning and I feel like the change happened way too quickly for me to actually believe it. And I feel like I just have to give some major props to Belle because I know I would never be able to trust this guy after how absolutely terrible he treated her in the beginning of this movie. I also just don't think his character development was good enough. It happens too quickly as far as I'm concerned and so I just I don't like the guy and that's how I feel. Honestly part of me is like maybe he should have been even lower on this list just because I don't like him that much but then it's like at least he's better than some of the other cardboard cutout princes that I just have like no feelings or thoughts about whatsoever and so at least he made me feel something and so that's why he's at number eight. That's how I feel about the beast. Um, yeah let's move on to number seven. All right so we're finally getting around to the boys that I actually like and so we have Prince Philip from Sleeping Beauty up next. Now I feel like without a doubt this boy is the best out of the original three princes. While we still didn't really get to know much about him as a character we got way more ship development with these two which I just loved. First of all they've known each other since they were little. I do question the age gap a little bit there but I think it's okay because they never actually got together until they were older. The whole arranged marriage but then actually falling in love on their own trope is just so adorable to me. She literally interacted with him beforehand in a dream. Like I feel like that's just next level soulmate energy. They also have this whole like forbidden love story because they don't know that the other person that they like is actually their fiance. Like I feel like there's so many levels to their story and I just love every part of it. And unlike Snow White's prince, I just personally feel like everything he does when he is on screen is just 10 out of 10. Like yes, it was a bit abrupt for him to interrupt her singing and it definitely gives the same vibe of that scene from Snow White, but at least he acknowledges how she reacts to it and apologizes for frightening her and they go on to have a cute little forest date. Like how adorable is that? And I also just love everything he does afterwards, like how he's chill with marrying a peasant girl and giving up the throne for her. And then not to mention he goes on to fight for her and take on Maleficent even when she is in her like giant scary dragon form. And like yes he does kiss a dead girl as well but I feel like it's unclear as to if he's like aware of the curse and what needs to be done to wake her which I feel like in this case he would be. Like there's no way that the kingdom wouldn't be talking all about like true love's kiss and how that's the only thing that's going to be able to save her, right? And so yeah I like Prince Philip. I think he's great. He can also sing and dance and I also really like his speaking voice. I feel like it's very attractive and so yeah that's how I feel about Prince Philip. I would definitely marry this man and so that is why he is number seven. Okay so now I feel like we're really getting into the good ones because next up we have Shang from Mulan. Now we don't get to see as much of this man as I personally would have liked which is why he's not higher up on this list than he is but I personally feel like similarly to Philip everything we do see of this man is just really great. Now first of all the fact that he was chosen to be captain because he was number one in his class and has extensive knowledge on training techniques. I mean there is also the fact that he is the son of the general but I still feel like those accomplishments are his own as well. Then there's I'll make a man out of you. I mean need I say more? Like I feel like that scene just speaks for itself in every way. I also love how he doesn't give up in the face of danger even when the odds are not at all in his favor. And of course there's also the fact that he spares Mulan's life when she commits treason. He also goes along with her plan in the end and even stands up for her which I really appreciate. He's also just like this little socially awkward boy. Like the fact that he figures out where she lives and goes all the way there just to give her back her helmet. Like I love him. He is so pure. He's just honestly such a wholesome guy and I feel like although we don't get to see that much of him or learn much about his backstory, he's still just so perfect and deserves to be right where he is on this list. But enough about Shang. Moving on to number five, we have Prince Eric from The Little Mermaid. So I personally feel like I've always felt a little bit indifferent towards Eric. Like I feel like so many people are just so obsessed with him and I've always just kind of been like meh. But I feel like after making this video, I can definitely see the appeal a little bit more. So first of all, he's a prince from the start and he's hot. So he's definitely got that going for him too. I like how he has hobbies and interests. Like he likes sailing and he has a dog and he can play the flute or whatever that instrument is that he's playing in the beginning of the movie. I also just love how much of a hopeless romantic he is. Like how he says that he'll know that she's the right one when he meets her. How he looks everywhere for her after she saves his life and they have that little moment together on the beach. And then the way that he looks at her when he sees her in that pink dress, man like it's almost too much for me. And then I just admire how great of a guy he is like when the ship is sinking and he does everything he can to try to save it and then he even hops back on that ship when it's burning to try to save Max and then how he helps Ariel without a second thought even though he doesn't even think that she is the one because she can't speak and then how he takes her on this romantic tour around town ending with this beautiful romantic boat ride like who is this man? But no guy is perfect and I personally will never be able to get over the part where Sebastian says her name and he says Ariel and then Eric says in the most Americanized way Ariel. It just it 
Raven makes me laugh every single time and I love it so very much. But also like, who am I to judge when I also say her name wrong anyways? And then when all things come to a head, he really does come through at the end of the movie. First of all, he doesn't care that she's literally part fish. He takes on this all powerful sea witch underwater for her. And then is literally the reason why she gets defeated in the end by him navigating the ship into her in the middle of this like insane storm. Like he is the reason for this movie's happy ending. And I just like, I have to give him props for that. Like, yes, is he a little bit dumb for not realizing that Ariel was Ariel in that moment? Sure. But also he was half unconscious at the time. So I don't blame the guy. And I feel like he 100% made up for it in the end. Also the, I already lost her once. I'm not going to lose her again line is just perfection and hits me right in the gut every single time. And so yeah, that's Eric. I love him now and I 100% understand the hype. And so that is why he is number five on my list. Now I feel like some people might be surprised that I only have this next one at number four, but the list is spoken. And so we have Aladdin up next. So first of all, what a backstory. We've got this orphan street rat who has to steal bread to survive. What a guy. And then on top of that, we see him give this loaf of bread that he just risked his life for to these two children who he sees need it more than he does. Like yes, Aladdin does get a lot of flack for lying constantly, but at the end of the day, he really does just have this heart of gold that I feel like is one of the main reasons why he is just such a lovable character. Another example would be when he stands up to that terrible prince who almost whips the children or when he saves Jasmine for getting her hand cut off, or of course when he promises to give Genie his freedom moments after meeting him. Which yes, he doesn't end up doing when he has the perfect opportunity to, but he does come around and do it in the end, so I guess that's what matters. But like I said, he does still get a lot of flack, which I do personally feel like a lot of it is deserved. There is still the fact that he lies to Jasmine numerous times, and when he does have the perfect opportunity to come clean when they're watching the fireworks, he still chooses not to. But you can still chalk that up to him just being incredibly insecure, which part of me really doesn't blame him for. I think the only other thing I don't like about Aladdin is that one moment where he gets all cocky talking about Jasmine with Jafar and the Sultan. I don't know what that was about, but I just really do not like that moment. I wonder if part of it was just because he had just recently put on like the whole prince get up and so he was trying to like fit the part in a way. I don't know what that was and I honestly feel like I have no excuse for it, but it definitely made me feel icky and I don't like it. But back to the good things, I just feel like I wrote down so many great qualities about this man that I just, I have to list them off. So first of all, his guard escaping skills, 10 out of 10. His singing voice is so good, it makes me want to die. He has a pet monkey and a magic carpet, so that's pretty freaking cool. I love that he still has dreams and aspiration despite his like current situation. The guy practically has zero fear, like he stands up to anyone. He walks into the cave of wonders like he owns the place, like even when the cave is collapsing on him, he still remains like fairly calm. He's also just so smart and manipulative, but in a good way, like how he gets the genie to free him without using up a wish. Or my personal favorite, how he calculates where the window will be on the tower so him and Abu don't get crushed. And lastly, I just have to highlight just like how in love with Jasmine he is. The iconic neck rubbing thing that he does when she gets brought up and just like that entire scene in general. And then of course him taking her on this like romantic carpet ride sightseeing date. Like he's just perfection in regards to Jasmine. When he's not lying to her that is. So yeah, overall I definitely think that the pros to Aladdin outweigh his cons. I find it funny that he's like so big on trust. Like I think he asks Jasmine to trust him like a total of three times throughout this movie when this guy's like constantly lying through his teeth. But nonetheless, I still love the guy. And so yeah, that's why he's here. That's why I feel about Aladdin those are my thoughts. Moving on to number three, we have Prince Naveen from The Princess and the Frog. Now, I was not at all expecting this man to make it this high up on this list, but after going back and revisiting this movie, I was just reminded as to how much I love this man. So obviously, first and foremost, this guy is a prince, but uh oh, he is broke. His parents have cut him off, which is actually something that I really admire about this guy. This is something I didn't really realize until I got to Naveen, but I feel like for me personally, I'm just really attracted to somebody who like has real ambition and drive. And so if you're just like living off of your parents' wealth, that's kind of a bit of a turnoff for me. And so I admire the fact that his parents were like, no, like he needs to understand the value of hard work. And so we're cutting him off so that he can make something for himself. Obviously him taking that as, okay, I need to marry a rich girl is a bit of a red flag, but obviously he does come around in the end, which is great. And obviously there are quite a few negative qualities when it comes to Naveen, especially in the beginning of the film. So I figured we'll focus on the positives first. So he can play the ukulele. He loves jazz. He can sing, he can dance. He teaches Tiana how to dance. He's very smooth, even when he is a little literal frog, and I love how he encourages Louis to follow his dreams. On the flip side though, he is very much a flirt. He literally makes a move on Tiana after they had just been turned into frogs and they have done nothing but fight up until that point. And at the beginning of this movie, he really only cares about girls and partying. He's also maybe not the brightest, like he does make a deal with the shadow man after all. He also lies to Tiana about being broke to get her to kiss him. And in the beginning of the movie, he really just does not understand the value of hard work and makes Tiana do everything for him. But I think the main thing that makes me love him so much is that he has just such great character character growth. I also feel like he's a type of character where you can understand why he acts the way he does. Like he was given everything growing up. And so why do we expect him to be able to like understand the value of hard work and be able to make something for himself now when he was never taught how to do that? 
And then, like I said, his character growth is just so good. Like, once he falls for Tiana, I feel like everything changes. But it's, like, a gradual change. It's not just, like, the flip of a coin, he's a good guy now. Like, no, it happens throughout the course of the movie, and I feel like the pacing is done really well. He goes back to save her once she gets captured by those fishermen without a thought, and I feel like that was pretty early on in the movie as well. But I think the thing that gets me the most is the fact that he falls for Tiana so hard that basically everything he cared about before becomes irrelevant, and the only thing he cares about now is making sure Tiana's dreams come true, to the point where he gives up his own dreams of being with her in favor of hers. This man really does pull just like a full 180 and I personally feel like it's done it's so well. Like him helping her get her restaurant in the end, just it's done so well, it makes me wanna cry. And so yeah, that's Prince Naveen. I feel like he truly becomes the man that Tiana deserves and so that's why I just had to have him be my number three. On to number two though, we have Kristoff from Frozen. Now listen, I know Frozen is super overrated and we're all sick of it, but I still personally feel like Kristoff is the perfect man and I would marry him just in a heartbeat. First of all, you've got the surface level things. He's cute, he can sing, he can play the guitar. He's got a reindeer bestie, freckles, great at banter. He loves ice. It's his life. I love a guy with interests, but I also love the backstory. Like he was adopted and raised by trolls and I just love the way he acts with his cute little troll family. I just think it's adorable. And he's honestly just such a great guy. Like he helps them when they're being attacked by wolves and he continues to help Anna even when his sled bursts into flames, which you could argue was partly just because he was promised a new sled if he continued to help, but I also think he would have continued to help anyway. When Anna gets struck by Elsa, he rushes in to help her without a second thought and then he also also helps them escape from Marshmallow. And there's also the fact that once he catches feelings for Anna, he suddenly does not care about himself or his ice business like at all. And then despite this, he still doesn't hesitate to bring Anna back to Hans and leave her potentially forever. Like what more could you want? Like that look he gives her when that door closes, it's too much for me. I honestly feel like I sound like a broken record, but it doesn't even stop there. Like it just keeps getting better. Like then you have him rushing back to Arendelle the moment he sees that giant storm cloud and then rushing right back into that storm for Anna. And then you have the end of the movie when he asks to kiss her, which is probably one of my favorite movie scenes of like <laughs> all time. Ah, COVID. <coughs> I'm trying to talk about Kristoff. And part of me is happy that we're only talking about first movie installments for this video because I personally feel like not that they ruined his character in the second movie, but I am a little bit disappointed that his purpose only became to like be in love with Anna in the second movie. Like, don't get me wrong, I love Lost in the Woods as much as the next person, but I do feel like part of what I like so much about him in this movie is that he is more than just like Anna's love interest. Like he is his own character as well. So yeah, I feel like that is all I have to say about Kristoff, but before we move on to number one, I do have a couple honorable mentions, just like I have some men that like weren't in the official Disney Prince lineup, but I feel like definitely deserved a shout out. So we'll do that quickly and then move on to to number one. So first of all, you've got Hercules. I mean, obvious reasons. He's the son of Zeus and he's also like a demigod. So I feel like he definitely deserves a shout out. And then you have Tarzan. I'm not really too sure how qualified he is to like deserve this shout out, but I guess he's like kind of the king of the jungle, right? I say so. So he gets a shout out from me. Then you have Milo from Atlantis just because I personally love this man so much. And then I guess he also does kind of count. Like he kind of becomes like the ruler of Atlantis, right? With him and what was her name? Kita? So yeah, he gets a shout out from me. And then you have Simba who we stand, but also like he's a lion. So that kind of complicates things. And it's hard to kind of compare lions to humans, but nonetheless, he exists. Um, and then there's also Robert and Edward from Enchanted, whom I both love very, very much, especially Robert. Like I feel like if I would have included the Enchanted boys, Robert would have probably been very high up on this list. Um, and then of course, Ben from Descendants. I could not give that man a shout out. I love him with my whole heart. But with all that being said, let's move on to number one, which is of course, Cusco from the Emperor's New Groove. No, I'm just kidding. It's not Cusco, but that'd be really funny if it was. Uh, no, instead it is Eugene slash Flynn Rider from Tangled. Are you surprised? Probably not. Like, listen, I know it's a bit of a basic response to say that Eugene is the best Disney prince, but honestly, it's just facts. Like until they make somebody better, Eugene will forever be my number one. I actually even, I'm not too sure if you guys are familiar with this, but when you work at the Disney store, you get to have a character on your name tag that is like your favorite character. And mine was Flynn Rider. I can prove it. It's over on my wall. I actually don't feel like getting up, but I can show you a picture. That is my name tag and that is Flynn Rider on there because he is my favorite Disney character. Actually, okay, that's a bit of a lie. I put down two other characters before Eugene, but they were both Disney Channel characters. And so that's why they chose Eugene. I also wrote down Eugene and they put Flynn Rider. So that wasn't my choice, that was theirs. I respected his true name. I just had to make that known. But enough of that, let's get into my notes, shall we? So why do I love Eugene so much? Well, first of all, he's got the backstory. Growing up as an orphan and having to make a name for himself, pun intended. I also like, what can I say? I enjoy a bad boy persona with him like being a thief. And not just like any thief, like this guy 
was able to like break in and steal the kingdom's most valuable thing. Like that's saying something. His voice, like singing or speaking, either way, it's absolutely beautiful. He's also a great storyteller. Like there's a reason why he was chosen to tell the story of the movie. Like he's great at it. The dude is also pretty indestructible. Like he falls off a cliff, gets knocked unconscious numerous times, gets hit by a beam, almost drowns, catapults onto a horse, gets stabbed and still lives to tell the tale. Now, is he fairly manipulative and two-faced in the beginning of this film? Yes, but just like with Prince Naveen, once he falls for Rapunzel, his character development is just through the roof. He's got the cute nickname for her, the way he looks at her during the town exploring scene and the whole boat sequence is just everything to me. And then how he tries to give up the crown in exchange for Rapunzel and her safety and how he keeps fighting for her when he's literally about to be executed. And then of course, like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't stop there. He then goes on to literally get stabbed for her and then sacrifices his life for hers by cutting her hair. Which speaking of, I've seen a lot of discourse online recently about how he cut it too short, which just makes me so mad because I remember at the time thinking like, wow, this is so great that they're showing a Disney princess with like really short hair and she still is incredibly cute. So everyone online saying that it's ugly, you're just wrong. Like that's not true. I love her little pixie cut and it makes me so happy that we have a Disney princess with short hair. I mean, they don't really show Rapunzel that much with her short hair, but still I love how like canonically that is how she looks by the end of the movie. And also the fact that he was able to do that in like one clean swoop while he is like currently bleeding out is pretty impressive. I also love his relationship with Maximus. Like the fact that his nemesis in the beginning of the movie is literally a horse is just gold and then their journey from like enemies to besties is everything to me. But yes, I love Eugene. Is he a little bit of a problematic flirt in the beginning of this movie? Yes, but it's his character growth that makes me love him so much. I actually wrote down a couple lines that I just like, I feel like I can't talk about Eugene without shouting out. So first of all, we've got the line when they're in like the cave thing and they're about to die when he like grabs Rapunzel's face and he's like, there's no point. It's pitch black down there. Ugh, gets me every time. Um, and then of course you were in my new dream. Like I can't not talk about that line when talking about Eugene because it's probably one of the best Disney lines to ever exist. Um, so yes, I love Eugene. So does everybody else, but like that's because he's perfection. But yeah, I want to know which Disney prince is your favorite. So don't forget to let me know in the comments down below. I personally feel like the Disney princesses get a lot of love and obviously for good reason. I love strong independent women, but I had a lot of fun talking about the princes today because I feel like they also deserve some love as well. And so that's what we did today. And I feel like it was a lot of fun. So yeah, like I said, let me know down below which prince is your favorite. I can't wait to read all about it. Anyways, Cater Tots, that is all I have to say for today. Hope you'll have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very, very soon. For those of you who stick around during the outro because I've been giving life updates now. Uh, yes, I did have a good trip to Spain. No, I don't think I got COVID from my trip to Spain. I think I got COVID from my Sebastian Yatra concert that I went to the week before my trip to Spain because I started showing symptoms while I was on my trip. So that was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, overall, I did have a great trip. I was kind of thinking about doing a merch haul because I found a lot of fun Soy Luna stuff in Spain. So I was thinking about doing that on my Patreon. So if I got any patrons watching, let me know down below if that's something you would like to see because I would love to do that. Um, but yeah, I think that's all, all the updates I've got for you guys today. Um, so yeah, love you guys. Bye. <laughs>